step one. We recognize that our lives are unmanageable. We are not able to manage them ourselves. We're not able to make major changes that need to be made on our own strength and wisdom. Or you wouldn't be sitting in a chapel. You wouldn't need the facility that you're part of, that you're in. You wouldn't need program. You wouldn't need step one, let alone the rest of them. Step one. We admitted that is the first and most important thing that needs to happen. We need to admit that we are powerless over our dependencies, over substances, over alcohol, over the way that we think sometimes, and that our lives have become unmanageable. We are not able to manage things on our own. Romans 7.18, I know that nothing good lives in me. I want to do what is right, but I can't. We're going to be looking at this portion of Scripture and a, and a couple other ones, but it really comes down to that point. I want to do what is right, but I, on my own, my own strength and wisdom can. So that's what step one is about. Admitting. <clears throat> Pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for your word. As we look to your word, Lord, help us to be completely honest with ourselves. It's easy for us to be honest with ourselves when we are at a bottom, when we are in the gutter, when we are behind the bars or in the hospital bed. It's easy. Early in recovery, it's easy to admit. But Lord, we need to admit it to ourselves over and over again that as we face things in life that we need you as we face temptations we need you as we face the world especially these days we need you in all that we do every decision making we need to admit that we need you so help us Lord here this morning to keep that in our minds and our hearts, to remember where we've been, and to trust you and be honest with ourselves that we need you. Speak to me, Lord, because you know, I know I need you. Speak through me, Lord, the words that you would have each one of us here today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So the trouble is not with the law, and we have that, right? I mean, the, the, the stripped down version are the Ten Commandments, and it's not like it's hard for us to understand what they say. I think the one thing people get tripped up on is that whole word covet. And really, if you covet something that is not yours, it's someone else's, and you think about it long enough, you're going to take it, or you're going to do something to obtain it, and it really leads to all of those other obvious commands that God gives us. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, all those things start up here. And when our heart is cold or hardened, we don't use this very well. And we 
we do whatever we want or feel that we need to do, uh, we start and when there's a substance in our body, you know this isn't working too well. So we start making decisions and doing things that lead to where you're at today. So it's written down for us. We can read it. We know it. There's laws that even man has put forth that we're not able to follow. There's instruction. Sadly, we have um, responsibility class and we have PRT because we're not able to follow simple rules and, or you wouldn't be here in the first place. You know, and I, 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 I'm a graduate, I know. I went through the program many times, I know, before I completed it. And, but we come into a facility like this not just because we put a substance in our body, but because we don't, or maybe even incapable to some extent, of following rules. Following things that are written down, in most cases things that are simple for us to understand. So I'll start over again with Romans 7, 14 through 17. So the trouble is not with the written law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. But if I do, if I know what that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with, that the law is good. So I'm not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me. And this is important for us. E even if you look at the 12 steps. All right, let's break it all the way back to the beginning. <clears throat> I admitted right, that I am powerless. It's, it's written down for us. It's step one. I admit that I'm powerless. But yet, there are many times that I want to take that power back. There are many times when I want to handle something on my own. I want to do something the way I want it, even if I know in God's eyes it's wrong. Each one of you experienced that same decision-making in your head. We know what is right, but yet, the sin that lives in us causes us to start processing. Oh, boy. well, let's see. I know, I know, um, I'm on pass, and it's Friday night, and I know when I get back on Sunday, the rules are the written rules are. I'm going to get breathalyzed or I'm going to have to give a urine. And we start processing that stuff in our heads. We're playing with, we know what the rules are. But yet we start processing things up here that we know are wrong, not only as far as the rules are concerned, but in God's eyes. Now, here, at the, in verse 17, it says, so I, I've come to, let me go back to 16, it says, but if I know that what I am doing is wrong, this shows that I agree with the rules. I'm going to get breathalyzed and you're not allowed to drink when you're in a program. So I'm not the one doing it. It's my addiction. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but that's, I mean, that's reality. Don't get caught up in the way I used to do it because when people used to ask me, then why did you drink if you knew you shouldn't drink? I said, well, because I'm an alcoholic. See, we can't be there. We can't stay here because we know we're not able to follow the written rules. We are unmanageable. We can't manage to do 
what we're told, let alone what we know is right. So here we are, Romans 7, 18 through 22. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. And we need to be, listen, we need to admit that we have a sinful nature. See, because when you admit, you're ahead of the game. You have a chance. You recognize what's going on. If I admit that I'm powerless over my sinful nature, then I, I can do something about it. <clears throat> right? If I admit that I'm powerless over this, right? The thoughts that go on up here on my own, my, my history proves it, right? And, and the relapses over and over and over and over again throughout my early history proves it. Your history proves this to you. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, am I really the one doing wrong? It is sin living in me that does it. Again, here's a, a repeat of the end of, <coughs> what was it, 16 and 17. This is a repeat. This is reminding you that there's a power influencing this and this. And you might look at it as a substance, but I tell you it's more than just that. I don't want to do what is wrong. I don't want to get a bottle of vodka, but I do it anyway. I don't want to go to the corner where I used to cop dope, but I do it anyway. This is the way we need to look at it, okay? That on our own, we are unable to make the right decisions. Even knowing in our hearts that it's wrong, we are unable to make these decisions on our own. We don't have, first of all, we have the wisdom, we know already, but we don't have the strength. We don't have the courage. But if I do what I don't want to do, I'm not really the one doing it. It is a sin living in me. I don't have the power on my own to overcome sin. None of us do. Because we sit there and sin, right? It tells us in God's Word that sin first starts here. In, in recovery, right? A relapse starts when? It starts here. It doesn't start when we put a, a bottle to our lips. It starts here. Sin is the same way. When we think about something, we have an opportunity to make a decision at that point. We're powerless on our own to make the right decision, but that God wants us to make the right decision. And He makes it possible. I've discovered this principle of life. That when I want to do what's right, I never really do what's wrong. Even though I know God's law, right? I, I want to, with all my heart, be able to follow the rules. But on my own, I can't. Our lives are unmanageable. We just can't seem to manage even to do what we know is right. We come up short. Romans 7, 30, uh, 23 and 25 through 25. But there's another power within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is within me. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? There is another power within me. Now, we're going to get 
to the power that is over all other powers. But men, if you don't believe, if, if you can pretty much turn on your TV and see evil. If you look at your life and, and the things that you have done and the things that have been done to you, you can see evil. If you don't think that there's evil that is trying to keep you away from coming into and being in a relationship with God, that's part of the admitting that we're powerless. And what we're powerless over is pretty strong. Our lives are unmanageable. We can't manage but he can. God can. So we need to let him. Verse 25. Thank God. The answer is in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see how it is? In my mind, I really want to obey God's law. But because of my sinful nature, I'm a slave to sin. Because of what goes on up here, I'm a slave to sin because of the darkness, the, the hardness, the coldness in my heart. I'm a slave to sin. But thank God, the answer is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I, when, when you pray, it's always, dear Lord, Open my heart and my mind to your leading. Soften my heart. Thank God. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wild flowers we bloom and die. But the Lord is like a father to his children. A good father. A good father. Tender and compassionate. He knows that on our own we sin. He knows that our sinful nature will always be back here. Hopefully it's back here and it's not right here. He knows that our sinful nature harms this. And I'm not talking about, of course, the beating heart. But And he's tender and compassionate. He is our every need. We are his children and he loves us. And it all comes down to how we perceive ourselves. It is how we see ourselves and our God. Where we put ourselves in this relationship with him. How we put ourselves in this life that we're living and how we perceive and how we see God for who He is and acknowledge Him in all that we do. So we're looking at self-perception. We may have begun to realize that we, are, we have character flaws <laughs> that are beyond our control. Deep down inside there is a sense of brokenness that is a constant reminder of our humanity. Hopefully, we will get to a place where our behavior is under control. And we will be able to maintain sobriety, but as long as we are in a human body, we will have to contend with our sinful nature. Hopefully, we will get to a place where we're able to behave. Again, these character flaws, character defects, uh, shortcomings, 
whatever you label them, wherever, whatever category you put them in, know this, that they're all part of your sinful nature. And we all, because of our sinful nature, even after we've been put on a path that God has laid out for us, we still play with them back here. When they pop up, sometimes we like to think about them. We process them. Instead of getting on our knees and saying, Lord, thank you for pointing this out. Now take it from me. We think about them for a while. And when we think about them, we give in to them. Again, step one is we admit that we're powerless. I'm telling you that that is something that you're going to need to admit on a daily basis when those thoughts come back into your head. Paul said of himself, I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. I want to do what's right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. There is another power living within me that is at war with my mind. This power makes me a slave to sin that is still within me. And King David described God's tenderness towards us because of our human condition. The Lord is like a father to His children, tender and compassionate to those who fear Him. He knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. No matter how far we progress, our sinful nature will always incline toward and be susceptible to the lure of our addiction. We can't afford to forget this or let down our guard. Maintaining sobriety is something we will need to nurture for the rest of our life, one day at a time. But we are also we also have a reason for great hope by trusting Christ and recognizing our helplessness against the power of sin. We open our life to the transforming power of God. And that's important because if we don't know that, then why? Why are you even trying? If we don't know that we can be transformed and delivered and then guided through the rest of our lives through the Holy Spirit and what, where's the hope? Why even try? Now our history again has proven that on our own we can't. And even though step one right there in the beginning says we admitted we're powerless, we seem to want to try to maintain power. And we can't. Right there at the beginning. John 8, 31 through 36. And this is how we can. Not on our own. Not on our own strength. Not on our own wisdom. Not even on the wisdom of others. Even though God puts people in our lives. To help us, we always need to refer back then to the source material to make sure that it's in line with God's will for our lives. Jesus said, Jesus said to the people who believed in Him, You are truly My disciples if you remain faithful to My teaching. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean? You, we will be set free. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And a slave is not a permanent member of the family but a son is part of the family forever. So if the son sets you free, you are truly free. <clears throat> Our 
Are we free? What do you mean I, I, I still have a sinful nature after I've been transformed by God? What, what do you mean that I might still have temptations? Don't you know that I've been delivered? We get caught up in that sometimes too. We admitted that we are powerless over our dependencies, over our character defects, over our shortcomings, over our sin. We are powerless, but God is all powerful. And God sent His Son, Christ Jesus, so that we might be able to then come into this personal relationship with Him, that we might be forgiven of our sins, and when we come up short with a mournful and sorrowful heart and we come asking for forgiveness, we are forgiven. Because you're going to come up short. But we must seek the truth. If we want to be set free, we can overcome temptation. We can overcome our past. And it comes through Christ Jesus. You can't free yourself. Step one. Your life is a mess and you will always give in to sin. And you can't free yourself. He can. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much that you can free us. Even though we will always, as long as we are breathing and we are living and here we are, there's always going to be temptations. There's always going to be things that are, are, are tempting us to give in. We know that as we, as we are here right now, each person here, if they think about even within the last 24 hours, I'm sure that they thought about doing something that they know is wrong. And Father, I pray now as, as you speak to each one of us, Lord, and we, we recognize those things, I thank you, Father, for pointing them out. But none of us are able to overcome those temptations without you. We need to admit that, that we are powerless over our decision making. Even when we have it in black and white, we can't follow the rules. Even when we know it in our hearts and our minds, we want to do it. And sometimes we give in. But thank you, Lord, that through Christ Jesus, we have a way to overcome those thoughts before we give in to sin. And I pray, Lord, for each person here, that first and foremost, they know that you are calling them into a personal relationship with you through Christ Jesus. That by admitting that we are sinners, and accepting then your Son, Christ Jesus, into our hearts as our personal Savior. We are made new. We are saved. We are cleansed. By repenting of our sin, never wanting to repeat those sins that we know, Lord, we cry out to you and, and ask for forgiveness. And you, you pull us out of that. You set us on a a, a firm foundation, a starting point. So I pray, Lord, for each, pe each person in this chapel this morning, if they have yet to receive you, Lord, if they have yet to, to accept Christ Jesus into their hearts as their personal Savior, I pray, Lord, that they do so now. Admitting that they're sinners, they ask Christ into their hearts. 
repentant of their sins, never wanting to go back. We come to you now, Lord. And as, as we receive Christ, we thank you, Lord, because he promised us a counselor in the Holy Spirit. So as we read your, your word, Lord, and you speak to our hearts and our minds, Lord, as these thoughts, as these temptations come, Lord, I thank you, Father, because the Holy Spirit will guide us, will make, make them known to us so that we can see them for what they are, Lord. And I thank you, Father, because when we notice them and we ask you to take them from us, you will. Give us the courage, Lord, to completely let them go. We lay them at your feet. And we don't want to repeat them. We admit that we're powerless over making these decisions on our own, Lord. You point them out. We, we recognize that we are powerless over letting them go, but you are all powerful. So take them from us, Lord. Cleanse us. Again, Father, I thank you for being here with us. Our lives were beyond unmanageable. They are insane, but we can't manage to get right without you. So I thank you, Lord, for that truth. And I pray that, Lord, for each person here. Give us the wisdom and the courage to know and follow your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.